Today we're going to talk about the difference between descriptive and inferential statistics. The branch of statistics that summarizes and describes numerical populations is called descriptive statistics. Alternatively, the branch of statistics that is used to make inferences and test hypotheses about the underlying nature of the phenomena under study, which give rise to these populations, is called inferential statistics. For example, describing a class's test scores using the average and, say, the highest grade is an application of descriptive statistics. Testing whether one teacher is better than another by comparing the two teachers' class averages to see if there is a statistically significant difference is an application of inferential statistics. Now, that's a really important idea that I hope you spend a little time contemplating. Describing, say, the, the performance of a certain class giving, let's say, given a certain kind of teaching method, and let's say we describe it with, say, the mean, and you may be familiar with a, another statistic called the standard deviation. Now, we're going to talk about the standard deviation at length, but let's just begin acknowledging the fact that the standard deviation measures variability on a certain scale how spread apart the population is, or how spread apart a sample that was drawn from a population is. But it measures variability or spread. So let's say we have two statistics. We have the mean and the standard deviation. And the mean is a type of average. So let's say we have two classes, and these classes are given two different types of teaching methods. And we want to see whether there is a difference. So if we apply descriptive statistics, we just report the mean and the standard deviation, might even report the median and the mode, but, you know, we just report it and we'd say, well, you know, one might seem a little higher than another, and yeah, I don't know, maybe the higher one is better. Okay, that's descriptive statistics. Inferential statistics takes a much, a much more detailed approach to deciding which teaching method is better. So if we look at inferential statistics, what we'll do is we'll start off by testing the hypothesis that there's no difference between the two teaching methods. And that would actually be called the null, N-U-L-L, -L, null hypothesis. And we'd look at another hypothesis called the alternative hypothesis. And the alternative hypothesis would say, no, the, the new teaching method is better than the old teaching method. And then we'll crunch some numbers and we'll see which one supports the hypothesis, which hypothesis explains the data better. And, and there's a lot of details that goes into deciding which hypothesis explains the data better. And I couldn't possibly go into that in such a beginning area of this course. But suffice it to acknowledge that inferential statistics allows us to compare two hypotheses and see which one explains the data better, accounting for chance, also known as variability. And that's the process of making something called a statistical inference. So an example of a statistical inference would be as follows. The scores using the new teaching method are not statistically significantly any better than the scores using the old teaching method. That would be an example of a statistical inference. Another example of a statistical inference might be, the scores using the new teaching method are significantly better than the scores using the old method. And this would be really good for the person who invented the new method. But it wouldn't be good for the school board if the new method required a smaller class size and was more expensive and required new materials and books and computers. So it all depends on how, how you look at it. But the point is that descriptive statistics will just, I don't know, present maybe the mean, median, and mode, and maybe some measure of variability like the standard deviation. All right. But inferential statistics will go many steps further and see whether there is a statistically significant difference. And that's what college statistics is all about. 
high school statistics is, you know, you'll, you'll calculate the mean, the median, and the mode of a few little observations that you could all write on a piece of paper. And you'll say, yeah, the mean is this, the median is that, the mode is that. And in high school, you probably didn't even learn why you would ever use a median over a mean or a mean over the median. Does anybody in the real world ever report all three to an actual peer-reviewed journal? Well, no, <laughs> unless there's a really good reason for reporting all three. So this is more of where the college statistics course comes in. Why are there three different measures of center, mean, median, and mode? And when do we use the, the median over the mean? That's really a college-level idea. You probably didn't learn that in, in high school. But in any case, descriptive statistics could be used to summarize. It could be used to describe. And one of the most common statistics used to describe is what we would call the average. So that's this first column here. Inferential statistics, which you probably didn't learn anything about in high school, which is real college level statistics. Inferential statistics can be used to infer whether one teacher's teaching approach is better than another's in preparing for a standardized examination by comparing the two teachers' class average test scores to see if there is, now this is the really important thing, wait for it, a statistically significant difference. Statistically significant difference. That is huge. That is the power of statistics. So here's another example of inferential statistics. Test for racial bias in the hiring practices of a particular corporation by testing whether the proportion of minorities is significantly different from that of the general population. And again, we used this really important word. Significantly. We could also, as an example, Test whether one diet works better than another by comparing the average number of pounds lost and testing whether the observed difference is statistically significant. So again, we have this really, really significant important word. Significant. Let me say it again. Significant. So statistics then finds its way into two, two ways of conceptualizing the word. One is as a plural noun, which is deals with data reduction, and examples of that is the mean, the median, the mode, the lowest observation, also called the first order statistic, the highest observation, also called, now pause the video and see if you remember what the highest observation is called in the language of statistics. It is called the nth order statistic. Now, statistics is a singular noun as an academic discipline, which can be bifurcated into two different types of statistics. Descriptive statistics, which just describes or summarizes, you know, just presents the mean, median, and mode, and doesn't really do much with it, except maybe saying, well, one is greater, but we don't know if it's significantly greater. But inferential statistics goes to actually test hypotheses and test whether there is a statistically significant difference between, say, two means or two medians or even two modes, which is actually very rare. <laughs> um, and the tests really allow us to say whether this difference is beyond chance or not. So here's a little tip to sort of, um, to sort of keep in mind. Tip inferential statistics can use descriptive statistics and more but descriptive statistics doesn't use inferential statistics. So that's a pretty important little tip. Let me give you another little tip for inferential statistics. Key phrases indicating the use of inferential statistics, hypothesis, significantly, beyond chance. And here's another little part of this little tip. If a study tests for statistical significance, then inferential statistics was used even if non-significant results were reported. So this is something that I've noticed has um, confused students in the past. Some students have thought that unless a significant, a statistically significant result is reported in the analysis, then, then inferential statistics was not used. But that's 
incorrect. So I want to stress it here emphatically and unequivocally that if we use the term significant or we use the term non-significant, or some people use the term insignificant either, though that's really technically not correct. Um, non-significant or significant still means that the, the subject of inferential statistics was used in order to really test for statistical significance. So, so please keep that little, little tip in mind and, and don't get confused. So let's do a little example here. Let's focus on number three. Let me make this a little bit larger so it's easier to really focus on this one question. So the following is a hypothetical advertisement similar to one that I read in a health food store. Have you ever gone to the health food store and you get these, these, um, these supplements that are advertised to people? And these, these advertisements make it seem like these supp supplements are like the greatest thing in the world um, since sliced bread. And they're not necessarily only in the health food store. You'll see advertisements like this on television. So let me read this to you. Subjects using the proven powerful fat burning formula in fuel line Fat Fighter 69 for a little more than nine weeks experienced an average weight loss of a whopping. Now, when you see this word whopping, a statistician will never use the word whopping ever, ever, ever. This is sort of a little, a little key word. Uh, whopping that this is written by someone in advertising to try to get you <laughs> to believe something. You see this word, you should put your little smellometer on because I smell something here. I can smell it, you know, pretty badly. So I'll go through this again. Subjects using the powerful, proven. Oh, here's another word that you you should be a little careful of. See, in statistics. We don't say prove. We'll never say prove a hypothesis in statistics. If you hear anyone say we've proven a hypothesis, then that person doesn't understand statistics because in statistics, we talk about statistically significant effects or statistically significant differences. But, but someone who truly understands statistics and is not trying to mislead you will never use the word proof. So keep that in mind. But Subjects using the proven, powerful, fat-burning formula in fuel line Fat Fighter 69 for a little more than five weeks experienced an average weight loss of a whopping 12.1 pounds, 174% more weight loss than the placebo group and 247% more weight loss per week than the group of people who used America's number one selling diet pill. <laughs> This is an example of descriptive statistics. Now, that's true. It is. We've described it. We've described the amount of weight loss. It's a whopping 12.1 pounds. <laughs> we even have a percentage in here. And who knows what America's number one ditch selling diet pill is. <laughs> I want to see the calculations that led to this, right? This is an example of descriptive statistics. So this is true. But is this an example of inferential statistics? Was there a test for a statistically significant difference? Pause the video and see if you can see whether there was a test for a statistically significant difference. The answer is no, there wasn't. So this is an application of descriptive statistics but not an application of inferential statistics. So proposition number one, this first proposition here, proposition number one is true, but proposition number two is false. So this would make the correct choice. B. B. So this is an example of a multiple choice type of question that I like to use in, in my classes. I love true false questions, but I like putting them together. Um, in a multiple choice question. This, this is just something that I like. Now, I use the word proposition. I should define it. A proposition is nothing more than a statement which is either true or false. 
So this Roman numeral one represents proposition one, and this Roman numeral two represents proposition two. And this is just a, a nice, easy way to make multiple choice questions.